Hi there and good morning. So this morning I thought we would take a quick look at a race. Uh, I'm going to go for the 240 at Aintree just to dig into it a little bit more, have a bit of analysis and see um, which horse we may come up with or horses we may come up with that we think are going to be the strongest in the race. Um, so I'm just on the dashboard here of Race Advisor Pro and you can find out more about Race Advisor Pro at www.raceadvisor.co.uk. So I've got this race open here and uh, let me open the 440 at Aintree from the dashboard and here we go here. So it's actually a, a quite a small race, a six runner race, which means we're only going to be getting um, two horses if we're going to bet in the place market. And interestingly, regarding the place market, uh, we can see here that the VDW place score is 94%. And what that means is, it means that the VDW score, we can get that by just clicking on any of these odds here. It means that historically, the top four horses for VDW score, and this rating goes from low to high, which means the lower the score, the better. The top four horses, a horse has placed from this top four, 94% um, of the time in similar races in the past. That's a strong indicator that one of these four horses is going to be good to place. However, we will also notice here that the VDW win market is only 69%, which means that only 69% of the time has one of these four horses won a race similar to this in the past. And that tells us quite a lot, because that tells us that these races are competitive because we're getting a high place point but not a high win percentage um, and, and that's over historically similar so that's a good piece of information to be starting with now the first thing we notice down here is that Dinon's is currently at Betfair of the 70 which is way too high for me personally so I'm just going to remove that horse which reduces the already small field down to just five runners I'm going to unselect these because I know that Navajo Pass was the one not included there but we can always find that again if we want to. Um, now, I also noticed that days since last good race is all quite an extended period of time, uh, and that's obviously because we're still pretty fresh into the jump season. So again, I'm not really going to take too much uh, consideration on that today. Sorting by the 5278 factor, and this is a combined factor. This is like a compiled factor that uses different pieces of information and different ratings to actually give a kind of a score for each horse based on them. And that's put these three horses here as the strongest. Now, if we sort by PR odds, which is our tissue odds line, that's, uh, we can see here that actually Somerville Boy is also in there, um, coming in at number five here. But Somerville Boy is also in there as well, and there's not really much to say between them. If we look at the probabilities specifically here, now we can start to get a bit of a picture of how our odds line is working, because we can see that the top three here are pretty much identical. Well, they are actually, they've all been given, in fact, the same chance of winning the race which tells us that our algorithm this is done using an ai algorithm our algorithm is telling us that essentially these are the three horses that are likely to be competing against each other in this race and it's going to be probably very hard to actually split um which one may be stronger than the other um call me lord is not far behind and is definitely a threat if there's a mistake made or if these two uh, these three horses sorry exhaust each other now remember this is a two mile four furlong race so there is the possibility that they could exhaust each other um okay so moving on across here i'm gonna kind of skip over uh, this particular column here because it's about um best ever speed on today's race time um which is obviously a hurdle race. And if we were just looking at speed, it would be Somerville Boy, uh, Chit Bello, and, and Thomas Darby. But again, all these numbers are very, very close, which is kind of what we would expect. Interestingly, though, Thomas Darby over here has had 10 out of 10 good races. So he's had to run a good race for every single one of his last 10 races. And that is by far the best. Somerville Boy's only been four, and Chit Bello's only been five or Chitty Bello has only been five uh, call me my lord down here is eight is also looking good but out of those three runners that are looking to be the biggest threat here Thomas Darby is definitely way ahead there 
Now looking at PFP, which is a kind of collateral form figure, um, again, Thomas Darby is coming in second, just behind Chitabello and just ahead of Somerville Boy, but there isn't really much to put between them. So I can't really use that very effectively. Now I'm going to open the speed graphs um, and these show every performance that the horse has had and the speed figure it's achieved. And what we do here is we add a dynamic filter. So this is a hurdle turf race. I'm just going to add that filter and you'll see that this graph suddenly shrinks with the number of races. Now we're only showing speed figures for hurdle turf races. Next I'm going to do good to soft. Um, so I'm going to add good to soft ground. And I tend to go either side as well. So I'll go good to firm and also um, I'll probably put soft in here too. So we've got that slight range around it and we put that in. And and again now we, we got start to see this picture. Then after that we want to put a distance in. I always like to have distance and this is two miles four furlongs. Now our distance filter works on yards. So I just need to convert that to yards quickly. So I come to Google and I do two miles in yards. So it's 3,520, and then I do four furlongs in yards, and that's 880. Now if I open a calculator here, I just need to do 3,520 plus 880, which is 4,400. So that means that this race is 4,400 yards. I want to go either side of that a little bit. So I'm going to go 4,000 and 4,800. So I've got 400 yards give kind of either side there. I'm going to apply that filter again. And now we can see there's very few horses here. Um, and this is kind of where we start. We're going to step back now in stages and you'll see how we do that. The first thing I noticed is these speed figures next to the horses here are dynamic. That's an average dynamic speed that the horse has achieved under uh, the conditions that we've set in this filter. And Chittabello, uh, sorry, Call Me Lord is, is definitely way ahead. And if I jump back to this screen, you'll remember Call Me Lord um, was the one that was just outside those top three. Now, but that's definitely the strongest horse here. Chittabello is good, but that last performance was pretty poor coming down there. Thomas Darby was on much of a much as a Somerville boy not looking very good at this distance at all. Now we already know that if we take that distance out, we get a lot more races. I'm going to zoom in, so we're only really looking at kind of, let's say, roughly um, the last year or so. That's probably enough races there. Now we can see Thomas Darby's performance has actually declined massively. And in fact, looking at this graph, most of these horses' performances have been declining, but they're now all sitting much it, uh, very much in a similar sort of area. We've got Navajo, Navajo Pass down here, uh, Call Me Lord, um, Somerville Boy, Thomas Darby, and then sitting behind there, Chitabella. So they're all kind of much of a muchness and, and, and kind of a bit threatening. So that doesn't really help us out very much. And we've seen that they've all been able to perform better as well. Um, now, Interestingly, uh, Somerville Boy, let's just look at some of the better performances. Somerville Boy was over a longer distance than today. Um, Chittabella was a shorter distance, these performances here, shorter distance. Navajo Pass, shorter distance, Call Me Lord. Actually, Call Me Lord, probably the most similar distance of all there. And in fact, this shorter distance, it didn't perform very well. Call Me Lord here, we've got two races at similar distances. So that's a nice uh, that's a nice positive there for Call Me Lord. Coming back over here to Chitabello, shorter distance. Coming up here for Thomas Darby, shorter distance. So it looks like the shorter distance is going to favour most of these horses. Call Me Lord may have the slight edge here. Now if I take out the um, ground condition, I'm going to get the soft as well, and apply that filter, we're going to get even more races coming in. This just starts to build this picture up. I'm going to zoom in again to kind of the last few races. Um, and again, we've got uh, Dinon's now coming through here with the most recent performance, but um, actually uh, not a bad performance, but over a significantly longer distance than today. But again, we're seeing much of a similar picture. We've got a couple of extra races in up here for Thomas Darby. Um, this one was actually over a similar distance, but on heavy ground. And because it was on heavy ground, it's probably going to perform okay today on good to soft ground. Um, although if we come down here, the soft ground down here, this performance here, 
really not so well and that was soft ground so it's always worth keeping an eye out for that because possibly not let's come back here good to soft performance not so great there um good soft good to soft so it looks like these two at the top here for thomas darby might actually be slight outliers um and then if we pull this back completely every single race the horses have been in and now i'm just looking for trends and again we're still seeing this downward trend for most of these horses um so this is this makes these sorts of races hard i mean recently dinos has had this uptick but if i remember correctly dinos was the horse at like 69 to 1 that we were eliminated so that's not gonna be in there but based on this information there's a possibility however we know that the distance is, uh, but you see we've got a distance here of very similar, uh, but it was on yielding ground. And again, that's slightly soft. So I would say that Dinanz is possibly massively overpriced, to be honest, at 69 to one. It might actually run a much better race than its odds currently suggest. Um, so I'm actually gonna bring it back in. Um, now I probably wouldn't bet on it because I tend not to bet on horses over 29 to one, but it just shows how difficult these types of races are. Now I'm going to open um, this form history, we're going to have a look at that in a minute, but first of all I'm just going to run um, a Monte Carlo simulation on this race, see if we can get any more insight, because at the moment what we're seeing is that most of the horses are kind of dropping in um, performance. Now Dinon's looks like its odds are significantly higher than they should be, Thomas Darby looks like there may actually be some strength there over um, today's conditions based on speed but we're gonna have a look into their form a little bit more to get that. From um, our tissue line and the market, it looks very much like it's Chitabella Navajo Pass and Somerville Boy, I believe, that are gonna be the, the potential threats, um, or at least the three running together with Thomas Darby just behind. But at the moment, there's not really any serious leaning each way, um, which we expect on this type of race. And in the normal course of things, you would almost certainly, to be honest, pass on this race. It's far too, um, far too competitive to get a good read on. But that simulation's finished. I'm going to exit and just drop back into the results here. Now, interestingly, let's put Thomas Darby first. And that's interesting because Thomas Darby is the one that had 10 out of 10 good runs. It was third for the PR odds, if you remember. Oh, no, sorry, it was Call Me Lord that was third. So it's in that top three for the PR odds. If we jump back over to the speed graph, um, it was this blue one here, uh, which was Call Me Lord. So I'm getting a little bit confused between Thomas Darby and Call Me Lord. So Call Me Lord was one that looked like there was some possibility there from the speed grass. Thomas Darby is being brought to the front um, in the Monte Carlo simulation just to have Chittabello and Somerville Boy. And Call Me Lord is only marginally behind. So that's all confirmed. But Thomas Darby is still looking strong here. And when we allay that with this 10 out of 10 good runs, um, and the fact that all of these horses look like they're competitive, possibly uh, we may have a horse with a bit of an edge there. Now, just before we jump into the um, the, the, the past form for these runs, I'll just have a quick look at a different race car, because I want to look at a couple of specific factors. I want to look at this factor, which is a collateral form factor, taking into account time decay, and it's quite disappointing. Again, it's put Thomas Darby right down at the bottom. And what this does is it, um, the, the longer away a race took place, the less impact it actually has into that factor. That's what the time decay means. Um, so it, it gives more importance to more recent races. And we're seeing here that actually, th there's not a huge difference between them, except for now, I hope pass here at the top. We're gonna obviously see that when we look into the form in a minute. If we do the same for speed, Again, Thomas Darby is right down there at the bottom. Now, the only thing to consider here is day since last good race. But again, uh, day since last one I've got here as well. Now, this is interesting because Chittabella hasn't won for 603 days. That's a long time. So I probably wouldn't be betting on this horse to win. That's a long time. All the others, again, are much for much as it's kind of the last season that they were running in. Uh, but Chittabello was one behind. So that, for me, knocks Chittabello out. That reduces the field a little bit down to Thomas Darby, Somerville Boy, um, and if we sort by PR odds, Somerville Boy, um, Thomas Darby, and then the gap to Call Me Lord before jumping into 
uh, Navajo Pass and Dinons as the rank outsider. Um, moving a bit further over actually as well, looking at these PFP, LR, LR2, LR3, LR4, this is the points added to the collateral form score over the last four races. And again, what we see here um, from Thomas Darby was a bit stagnant in those middle two, but generally we've been seeing gentle increases, but possibly um, possibly coming a bit stagnant last time out. Now, Somerville Boy has actually been improving steadily over the last four runs, and that's definitely worth considering. Chittabella, we've got a couple of negatives in there. It's bouncing around a lot. That confirms the fact with the 600 days, I probably wouldn't want to be betting on that horse to win. Um, actually, Call Me Lord, the one that's a little bit further out, we've got a few bouncing around here, a few negatives as well, which also isn't good. We really want a continuous increase here of um, positive signs, exactly like we see here from Somerville Boy. Navajo Pass, however, down here does have that steadily going on, and, and Dinon's is, is really not looking good there. So again, this is quite a nice piece of information. It gives a little bit more strength to, to um, Thomas Darby, but it stands out for Somerville Boy, um, but it also adds into the mix Navajo Pass. But what we've really got clear from this is is probably not going to be one for us. So let's come in here, let's have a look at Somerville Boy. Now remember this race is um, a hurdle turf class two on good to soft ground over two miles, four furlongs with about 19,000 in prize money. Now, first of all, we see at Cheltenham, Somerville Boy race, two miles, seven furlongs. Obviously that's a big race, 183K. It was only beaten by 6.25 lengths, so not competitive, but in a significantly better race. It was also carrying 11.10, and today you can see here, I'll move this over so you can see it carrying 11.4. So we've got a shorter distance, we've got less weight, we've got less competition. That is all good for Somerville Boy. Now moving down here, we come down to this two mile four furlong on soft ground at Cheltenham as well. Um, and we can see the horse won by 2.25 lengths. Um, so that's excellent news. Um, one well, carrying four pounds more than that today, but that hopefully won't be too much of a difference because there's a bit of a slight drop in class. Uh, the, the next most recent race we've got here is this one at Aintree back in 2019. Two miles, four furlongs, soft ground, carrying more than today. Now beaten by 32 lengths, which is a long way. And if we hold over here, we can see that he actually made a mistake on the seventh there um, and then soon weakened. So we're not going to include that in our summary because we can see that the horse made a mistake there. So everything here looks very promising for Somerville Boy. Moving on to Thomas Darby. There we go. Moving on to Thomas Darby, uh, we can see these last two races are similar, although one was on heavy ground, second to last one on heavy ground, but they're in a higher class than today. Beaten by four lengths, carrying 11.7, only carrying 11.2 today. So that's quite good. Beaten by four lengths, but not much of a pace. We've got a drop in class, we've got a slight drop in weight. May go in its favour, not huge. This heavy ground, it won. And I think this is what we saw, pardon me, on the speed graphs, um, that actually um, this horse probably prefers this heavier ground condition. Because coming down here to the good to soft, uh, okay, this is a chase race, not a hurdle, but it was beaten by 33 and a half lengths. A long way. And having a look here, we can see there was an awkward jump number five, so uh, that wouldn't have helped it, but obviously wasn't able to come back at all. Coming back to the hurdle races in 2019, though, a bit further down, again, on soft ground, performed okay, um, and but in a higher class race, but still not competitive, but um, was okay, but did make a mistake on the fourth, another mistake. And then we got this good performance here where it won, but this race was only worth five grand, so significant decrease in class here. So what we're seeing here is a horse where the conditions should suit, but there is an indication that this runner may prefer a softer ground that is going to get today, uh, particularly when competing against horses that really favour the ground. On top of that, there's a high risk of this horse making an accident. We're seeing a lot of mistakes in the in-running comments here. There's another one that I've just seen there, mistake on the ninth. Um, so we're seeing lots of mistakes in the in-running comments here. And another one, you see, mistake on the fourth. Um, so this horse, we've got a high chance of getting a mistake. We think it's going to prefer probably the heavier side of ground as opposed to the good to soft ground. Uh, and it's going to be racing against horses that really like the ground. So probably not one for us today. Um, and this is why looking at the horses 
form like this, even when you've done the kind of overall analysis, actually looking at their past history is so, so key. Um, now, we're also going to have a look at uh, Navajo Pass, which was the other one we considered. And I will have a look, since there's only six horses in this race, I will actually go in and have a look at some of the rest as well. So we can just get the whole picture for the race. Now looking here, we can see we've got three hurdle races here, but they're all a lot shorter than today, four furlongs less. But we can see this is all the races this horse has. So today is going to be the first time over such a distance. Um, now, only carrying 11 in the last one, which is carrying 11 one today, so very similar. But no impression here before the last. Stayed on, running when there was no chance. Uh, next one down, won the race uh, at 28k, so much better. Uh, but and the horse stumbled there but kept on well moving down to this two miler on heavy ground um was beaten just about not fluent um so what we're seeing here is a horse that um has potential but we really don't get any clear indication of how well it's likely to perform over two mile four furlong this is why it's going to be the slightly higher risk this is why the odds are going to be slightly higher on this horse than the others and for me i prefer to get a stronger indication personally of what's going to happen um, with a horse running so at the moment somerville boy is looking for the one for me but let's just jump into the others now if you remember call me lord was the one that looked like there was some potential there um and here we are in its form we can see there's this two mile three furlong race here over hurdles 57k carrying 11 stone it's 11 four today only beaten by half a length so very very promising there looks very strong since then uh, and was on soft ground but since then uh, the races have been significantly shorter we've had a two miler a one mile seven well almost a two miler uh, and just over two miles so around the two mile mark one one uh, performed not so well at the others and really badly on the last one but it did get held up on that last one which was the 265k race at Cheltenham so we can forgive it there um in this 17k race, much shorter distance, looked well, got held up and had no extra towards the finish. This horse definitely likes the distance. Um, if we come down here to this 2 mile 5 furlong as well, 31k, we can see another uh, 16 length win. So that, this horse, there is definitely possibility on this horse and this horse made a mistake in this race at the last and still won by 16 lengths. This was a 31k race at Sandown, but it was a couple of years ago now. So that form uh, may not be there. So it looks like the ground's gonna suit it, it looks like the distance is gonna suit it, and it should be able to compete at this class level, carrying pretty much the same weight it was carrying in Cheltenham last December. So um, so everything looks actually quite strong for Call Me Lord. Now looking at Chittabella, which is the one we just removed because the form looked like it had been decreasing recently, we got a two mile four furlong down here on the 4th of April 2019 when it was carrying 11.7, today carrying 10 12 so quite a drop now then it was beaten by 1.75 lengths um since then though we have seen a bit of a decline in performance we definitely saw that on the speed girls because we saw the speed figures were getting less and less prior to that um the horse did another good race here at aintree 19k two mile four furlongs again um and um this race here uh, further down at Carlisle. We're starting to get a bit far back now, to be honest, and that was over good ground. So again, this horse has proven it likes the ground. It's proven it's like the distance. It's proven it can compete at the class. I mean, this race at Aintree was 141k. Um, so this horse is definitely a threat, even when performing poorly. So I don't think we can ignore it entirely. Um, and last but not least, Dinon's. And here we have Dinons. We've got a two mile four furlong, a two mile six furlong race here. The six furlong, two mile six furlong race with 120k chase race. In fact, both of these are chase. Both the horse was beating really badly over yielding, yielding to soft, which is a similar ground to what we're getting today. Uh, coming down here to the two mile three, three furlong on heavy ground, uh, carrying 11 stone four, one there uh, out of five runners. Um, again, going back a bit further, we've got this two mile six furlong chase, two mile four furlong chase, one beaten badly, a uh, one one. Definitely an indication that this horse doesn't really like firmer ground. But apart from that, really not very much standing out for this horse, unless we go back to like early 2019, 2018, where we have a series of wins, but all at a much lower class. So it's likely that this horse is just going to be outclassed today. The 69 to 1 odds are probably still um, 
far too high for it, but uh, this horse is probably not going to compete. So um, what we're seeing here then is we're seeing actually there are kind of two horses that stand out really, Call Me Lord and Somerville Boy. And if we jump back over here, we can see Somerville Boy is this purple horse up here. Call Me Lord uh, is, sorry, uh, yeah, Call Me Lord is this blue one here. Um, so they both look promising. Um, they both are kind of in the frame at the front of the market. So the question then becomes, how do we actually bet on these runners? So um, the place markets aren't going to be uh, frame properties. There's not going to be enough money in them at the moment for us to get an idea of how they are uh, going to work. So based on that, I would say there are two ways to bet on it. We could dutch both these runners. However, there is a threat from uh, at least Thomas Darby, but Chittabello and um, possibly Navajo Pass in there as well. So just dutching these two runners for me still carries some risk. At the current odds of 3.95, 4.2, we're not going to get um, a particularly great profit from dutching two, or certainly not enough to uh, consider not consider the other runners. So that leaves me with two options. Either I'm going to place bet both of these in the place market. Um, actually, at least three options. Either I'm going to place bet. Uh, both of these in the place market, but only going to do that if I can walk away with a profit if only one of them places, um, which is possible. We'll have to see how the market's framed tomorrow. Um, and, and the profit needs to be decent. It needs to be at least 5 to 10%. So um, if I can't do that, I will probably go for, if I, the, the second option would be to go for Somerville Boy as an 80-20 bet to try and get some of that market for uh, the win should that horse come in. It's looking particularly strong. Um, so try and get that horse for the win if we can, but back it up with the place. And the third option is to actually just skip this race. It's super competitive. The, the, the way uh, the odds are likely to be is going to make it very hard to squeeze any value out of any of these horses. And if we actually um, remove those lights, you can see the only one currently potentially offering any value is Chittabella, not one of the ones we're going to bet. It's going to be hard to squeeze value out of the odds in this race uh, unless they change dramatically overnight. As I say, I'm recording this the night before, so they're going to be different when you're watching this video. Um, but so the third option here is to pass this race and just enjoy watching it. And that would actually be my recommendation. So um, because it's going to be super competitive, we're not sure what's going to happen. Um, but um, so those are the three options for me. And I'll have a look at the markets tomorrow and see how they frame. Um, I hope throughout this video you've got an idea of a way that we can just form read a race kind of quietly, pleasurably, enjoy it, try and piece apart the puzzle and put it back together again um, so that we can actually understand what's going on in the race, what may happen and what the risk is of betting in this race. And that's key, the risk of actually placing the bet, not just about finding the winner uh, in a particular race or not, actually about the risk that we get uh, emotionally by placing a bet in it and is our return is your return going to be worth that risk should the bet win it has to be um so that's just a psychological element. So that's how I looked at this race. I'd love to know what you think of this race, how you think it may be played out, and whether you're going to um, use one of the three options I've suggested, or if you're going to go for something completely different. Please do leave me a comment and, and let me know. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Race Advisor channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below to get alerted whenever we post a new video. Thank you very much for watching. Have an absolutely awesome Saturday. Enjoy the racing and I hope you walk away today in a profit. Thank you very much indeed.